video on bread. Um, so, I was watching a video the other day, it was very interesting. And the guy made bread and he used plain flour and a little bit of white and a little bit of uh, bread flour, a little bit of bread flour, um, and didn't knead the bread. Just left it to, to ferment for quite a long time. Um, and I was, and, and the result was pretty good. And I kind of, it, it, it goes against everything I kind of think about bread, um, about activating the gluten and kneading and all those type of things. So I was kind of thinking, surely that can't be true. You know, I'm, but I believe him. I, he's a genuine. He's a genuine. I love his videos, uh, and he's uh, and he's, he's he's genuine guy. He doesn't lie, so I'm gonna have a go. So, and I needed to. I need a bit of bread anyway, so um, we're gonna see how it turns out. So I'm gonna use my usual recipe uh, for bread, which is I've activated some uh, of my sourdough starter, but I've used plain flour. So there's a little bit of strong uh, bread flour in my starter. Uh, but it's mostly plain flour is that so we have got uh, a kilo of plain flour we want a good pinch of salt and cover that up so it don't uh, kill the yeast and then we've got um, 300 grams uh, worth of water and 300 grams worth of flour in the in the starter which I've activated so it's all nice and bubbly uh, and then we've got um, and then this is where I was kind of slightly concerned See, there's just not, it doesn't feel like there's kind of like lots of gluten in that. No, yeah. So I don't know how the bread's going to hold together. Uh, and, uh, and then, um, so, um, depending on which bread flour I'm using. So this is just the cheap stuff from uh, Lidl. Um, oh, like, a, like a supermarket home brand, uh, strong bread flour. <clears throat> or you can get like a uh, very strong bread flour. Um, for, uh, like premium brand bread flours, uh, and I find that you they can the the with the bread flours that have got more uh, gluten in them, um, you can get away with putting more water in. But uh, with the cheaper bread flours, um, I put less water in, and it also kind of depends on the time of year as well, uh, which is kind of uh, kind of quite interesting. Uh, but a, but a bit of a side note. Oh, so what we'll do. Uh, so the amount of water that I put in, I was in two mines in. I normally go between 450 and um, 475 grams worth of water, depending on, on the bread flour that I'm using. So if I've managed to get some better quality bread flour cheaper, um, I um, I don't normally buy it because I'm just go for the cheap stuff. Um, um, but if I get some better quality stuff, I put in about uh, 475 grams worth of water. And if it's just the cheaper stuff, um, like 400, 450 grams. So I'm gonna put in 450 grams because it's, it's um, Cheap, it's cheap, uh, non uh, gluten uh, 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 bread flour. So, uh, we'll just so there's 450 grams of water, and I'm just rinse out that so all the starter goes in, and then no kneading, just mix it all together, and then just leave it covered for however long probably about 12 hours, and we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. It will keep. Keep fermenting and fermenting and fermenting. Fermenting. I forget the, the word that you use when you just mix in the the uh, <coughs> water lies. No, I forget the word. I can't, I'm not even good in my own language, let alone foreign languages. So, uh, water lies. What? Water lies? Water lies? Water lies? But anyway, I suppose because I'm. I do things in a in a in a bubble. I haven't got expert bread people that I can ask about baking bread. And I don't work with any other chefs to kind of bounce ideas off. So most of the stuff that I do is just me faffing around finding out. So technically, this is a little bit of kneading, but we just need to mix everything together so it's all combined. Is it a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, oh, I don't know. So mix all together and then just cover. And because we're saving the planet one plastic bag at a time, I'm going to use a shower cap over the top of the bowl instead of cling film or a cloth. I think if you if you put a shower cap over it, it just creates its own little atmosphere, and you're not going to get any any of the liquid evaporating off or anything. 
this is us getting into it. So we just need to. This is just mixing to combine. Not doing anything else. There's going to be no kneading involved. There's going to be a little bit of shaping when we do the bread, but apart from that, no kneading. Although my thoughts on kneading are that it's it's only ten minutes. It's only 10 minutes, you know, unless you physically can't knead and you haven't got a machine that can knead bread for you, then um, it's 10 minutes of kneading. That's it, it's only 10 minutes. And I'm generally doing other things while I'm kneading bread. So I'm listening to a podcast or watching a video or making bread while I'm making bread. So it's only 10 minutes. The thought of making a dough and and uh, and and faffing around with it on the hour every hour for five hours doesn't really appeal to me i'd much rather need for 10 minutes and then leave it alone right so that's done enough so shower cap from the pound shop it didn't cost me a pound i got four for a pound so that over there and we'll leave it and we'll see what happens in a few hours. So it's definitely risen. You can see it has. So let's have a look. It's about 12 hours later. Something like that. Oh, that's alright. It's um, lovely and bubbly. Look at that. It's quite impressive. But you can tell there's no. It's. It breaks up too easy. It's not as elastic as uh, as a bread flour. But I've had a thought. I've had well. I decided. I think I decided what I'm going to do with it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock it back. And then what I normally do with my bread is I prove it again for eight or so hours uh, in the fridge, just to let it slowly ferment. Uh, and rise a little bit more. So what we'll do is we'll let it rise a little bit and put it in the fridge overnight. Let it well, rise a little bit because there'll still be some heat in that dough. <sighs> so it'll take the fridge a little while to cool it down. Um, and then it, it'll sit in the fridge for eight or twelve, uh, eight or ten hours, something like that. Sometimes even twelve, depending on what I've got on. Uh, and then we'll do, we'll try and form it into a bowl like I do um, my normal bread. And then the other part will cook in a um, in a tray, like a um, focaccia type of thing, um, and have it out uh, flat, and rise uh, rise rise it a bit more, rise, rise them both a bit more, and then kind of bake them and see what happens. Uh, I think that's the plan, um, but we'll see how it goes. So this is it. Um, more than twelve hours later, more like sixteen. Maybe even 18 hours later. No, about 16 hours later. Uh, I, got, I got sidetracked. Um, but it's fine. Uh, so it's, it's risen again, but it's done it slowly because it's been in the fridge. So obviously the, the, the fridge uh, temperature cools um, the, uh, the dough down and it stops the um, yeast from uh, working quite as fast. Doesn't look too bad. Doesn't look too bad. So I'm going to shape some of this dough and then we're going to roll the other part out and put it in a flat in a tray um i think that's for the best i think that's for the best so i need about a third of a third of that so i have to weigh it off camera because um that's a bit of wooden it's not level so it tends to be a little bit of a problem um if you're wanting to um use the scale on it so um, So we'll knock it back again. It's not. It's coming apart. It's, it, there's, lo there's not a lot of gluten in it. That's what it is. There's not a lot of gluten. So we'll kind of. I don't know how this is going to turn out. It might be okay if we. No, that's about a third. So it must be about 600 grams that I'm going to roll. 670, that'll be fine. So, not bad. 
so uh -huh. maybe that's it. So I just need to put a bit more flour in my fruit basket. So it's gonna get proof for a third time really. I don't know when I'm gonna cook this. Probably tomorrow. Probably put it I'll put it back in the fridge and prove it again. So what we need to, what we're wanting to do is and the dough probably is gonna tear, is we're wanting to create tension in the dough. So that's a case of doing that and then what happens is it stretches the dough from the top out and pushes it round. So you're kind of doing that kind of motion. So you're squeezing the bottom so it pulls the top and makes it tight like that and then it creates tension in the dough and that's what you get that nice spring from when you slice when you slice the top of the dough but we'll do all this so it's just that's not too bad actually that's not too bad it's not it's not flat it's got some bumps and things and if it, it was proper bread flour it would have it would be nice and smooth on top yeah so dough's sticky you've just got to handle a lot of dough and then you know how to how to use it and handle it and it doesn't stick to you <sighs> that's the only way i can tell you how to stop dough from sticking to you you just gotta it just one of those things that just comes one day that you just end up working out how to do it you just do it enough times and you you kind of work it out so you need to you don't need to use that much flour but if i were to put flour on that it can of course have problems so that there no, like that and then hopefully we've created some tension. It's not springing back. But anyway, so that in there. See, it's starting to rip. So a bread flour wouldn't have, wouldn't have ripped like that. And then just a bit of flour on top. And then we'll use the, the shower cap again. And we'll just put that on and then let that go back in the fridge. And we'll just rise for a few hours and then we'll bake it and see what happens. Now, the rest of this dough, it's looking at the tray that I've got. So, okay, that's nice. Is that gonna be too much dough? I think we're gonna have to use some flour for this. So, plain flour will be fine. And it will be a case of, it's gonna start sticking. Quite heavy. You can see it's starting to split. It's starting to split. So I haven't got high hopes for this, but we'll kind of see. But do you know what did? I mean, wheat. Hmm, that's kind of that's an interesting question. So wheat is. Um, it's been modified over the years. The wheat. Um, to turn it into um, what we've got. So different types of wheat have different types of gluten in and then obviously strain, different strains of wheat have been developed, developed by humans, us, to have different kind of characteristics. So that's why we have strong bread flour because that's a certain type of wheat. And then we have just a wheat that hasn't got as much gluten in it which we can use for it's not so bad when it's rolled out that we can use for flour for pastry and things so I want to tease it out and I'm going to put it in this tray and let it rise for a few hours the kitchen's a bit warm today it's still cold we're in May and it's still cold you know, on a night time, I'm almost having to put the heating on. Almost, which is ridiculous for me. It's no wonder that... Oh, no, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to talk about climate change. Because oh, I don't want to hear about it. So. Right like that. I suppose I shouldn't really be rolling, but... Gonna My argument would be it's going to be difficult to, because there's not so much gluten in this flour, it's going to be difficult to tease it out without ripping it. So, bread's made with, dough's made with, with gluten, are a lot more forgiving 
when you pull them out and that's why you can you see those pizza chefs throwing the pizza dough all around because of the gluten in it you couldn't do that with a dough that didn't have any enough gluten in it so that's about probably should use less dough but not to worry it's going to be more than bread, bread than anything else and then into that container so Move it around, put it in the container, and stretch it around. It's going to pull that on. And it's quite heavy. It's going to be a dense bread, it's this. So that is the corner. I don't think it will stick. If it sticks, it sticks. I should put a bit of flour in. Put a bit of flour in. That'll just stop it from sticking too much. Push it to the corners and then we'll cover it with something big enough and we'll let it rise and then we'll bake it in the oven and see how it turned out. Right, so that has risen unevenly because we've got a great big bubble there and it's lower there and it's higher there. So oven's on full and it's hot. So um, let's stick it in and let's see what happens. I think the only problem with this will be the texture and maybe I've let it risen too much. No, it's doubling in size so it should be okay. Not happy about that though. That's a bit of dried, it's like a bit of crust on the top, which you don't get when you knead it. But anyway, we'll find out when, once it's cooked. But it feels lighter. <laughs> squeaky of a door. I'll never fix it, let's be honest. Right, let's have a look. That's alright. That's alright. So, let's turn the oven on. Sounds like it's cooked. I hope it's not stuck. No, no, that's okay. Let's pull it out of there. I'll at least put it on the top of my angle. So it's gone crisp. Maybe a little bit too crisp. But we'll see how it goes. So get it away from that hot oh. pan and we're going to see. So sound too bad. That doesn't sound too bad. So, uh, yeah, we'll let it cool and then we'll cut into it and then we'll see what it's like. So it's doubled in size. It's, we've got some air bubbles. You know, we've got some air bubbles where it's risen. So it feels all right. We'll just have to have a look at it when we, um, when we cut into it. But, so it's flat uh, and square. I'm not bothered about that. What I'll simply do is we'll cut it into, um, like Melbourne Toast. So we'll cut it in maybe, maybe thirds, or in half, and then go along it like that way, and then kind of dry it out into. If well, I'm, I'm talking, if it's if it's if it's a failure that it's not that nice to eat, um, then I'll simply turn it into crisp bread. So slice down there, along there, lots of thin layers, um, and then dry it out, and it'll be nice for crackers uh, with toast, uh, with uh, with cheese and things like that. Um, so, and then we've still got the, the one we can't have a look at. We'll better have a look. See how it's risen. Might just leave it until tomorrow morning. Yeah, we'll leave that until tomorrow morning. I don't think it's going to rise much more than. Did you see? Yeah, so it's risen a bit. But I think we'll leave it until tomorrow morning and then see what. Uh, See what it's like when we bake it in the morning. Uh, but it's Saturday night, uh, so hopefully that'll cool quicker because it's Saturday night and I'm having a cocktail. So uh, I don't want to be slicing into things and making no sense after my second cocktail. Right, let's cut into this so I can enjoy my cocktail. Let's do it that way. And then we're going to do it with crisp birds. Yes, I'm going to do it like that. in the oven a little bit 
bit too long. No, that's not bad, is it? That's not bad. That's not bad. So let's cut into the thick of it. So what I will do with it, if I'm, I probably won't end up eating it all, but I'll turn it to crisp as so we'll just I'll let it go a little bit harder, a little bit stale, and then slice it that way and then kind of dry out the crisp as in the oven. But let's cut it. Where it's thickest. There you go, that's not bad, is it? That's not bad. That's not bad. Considering it's it's plain flour, do you know? I um I need a better serrated knife, that's what I need. Mind you, it's very fresh bread, so even the sharpest knife don't work with the freshest breads. So what we've got, we've got a little bit of butter that we're stuffing around with, with another exponent. Let's have a palette knife. So let's see how this tastes. Probably without the butter first day. Eh? It just doesn't taste as good as my sourdough. It just doesn't taste as good as my sourdough. Why doesn't it taste as good? Why isn't there a taste there? That's weird, isn't it? Does bread flour taste different to plain flour? It just doesn't taste as good. I mean, it, flour is flour, isn't it? Obviously not. No, it's all right. I'm just eating with a mouthful again. Oh, talking with a mouthful, sorry. So, yeah, do you know, if you were to turn it into a focaccia with olive oil and herbs and maybe some like tomatoes in there and some olives and things like that, do you know? It'd be all right, it'd be fine. As bread goes, mm, you know, for the, for the for the difference in price of the plain flour and bread flour, well, cheap bread flour and cheap um, plain flour, I just use proper bread flour. But it's all right, it works. You know, any port in a storm and all that. And if if things are a bit tough, um, and you've only got plain flour and you want to bake some bread, um, you can. You can you can use plain flour. Uh, also, you can turn plain flour into um, strong flour. Uh, I did a video. It's kind of quite interesting um, as an experiment. There's different ways of doing it. So one of the comments say you just buy some stuff from a health food shop and you can turn uh, plain flour into 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 strong flour by an extra gluten. Um, but uh, that sounded far too easy, so I did it the hard way. Um, there's a video. It'll be in the sourdough section. Um, other bread section, but there we go. Uh, that works. We'll see what the um, the uh, looks like in the morning. So let's bake this bread. Oh, it's risen quite well. It's risen quite well. So cast iron pot in the oven. We're getting hot. The oven's on full whack. Mm -hmm. I should close the door. Keep the heat in, but can't so. Bread into the cast iron pot. And slice down one side. Make sure we get a big cut so it splits open. And then spray on one side. We put some cold water, the lid on, and then the oven. 25 minutes later, we'll see what it's like. 
Right. It's not had 25 minutes, but it smells ready. Let's have, let's have a look. Turn the oven off. So I'm sure it'll be ready. Now, there we go. Look at that. That's an impressive split on that bread, isn't it? Oh, I wish you could do that with me, sourdough. So we've got an impressive split on it, but it's not hot. It hasn't, um, it's not as, for 600 grams worth of dough, or 660 grams of dough, something like that, it's not as, oh, that's going to burn the board, isn't it? It's already burning the board. It's uh, not as big as the normal loaves that I bake from sourdough, but, do you know, it's a phenomenal bread that's split up on me as well. Uh, so we'll let it cool, and then we'll cut into it, but... Looking at the other bread, it's um, it's dried out really quickly. It's dried out really quickly. Um, like my sourdough doesn't dry out like that quickly um, overnight. So there are some downsides to using uh, plain flour. But anyway, we'll see what it's like uh, when it's cooled. Let's cut into this. And don't want to cut it in half. Yeah, let's cut it in half. It's got a nice crust to it. That's a more impressive crust than I normally get. You know, that's kind of quite interesting. That's something to be thought about. Do you know, that's not half bad. That's not half bad. Who'd have thought? No need bread, eh? I can save myself all of ten minutes. So. Doesn't smell just as good. So the question is, the question is, do the experiment again, no need bread, but use um, bread flour and see what the difference is. That, you know, kind of do that. So, let's have a taste. Now let's take this from the, from the crust. So, Nice and fresh bread, but it's not fun. That's something to give it a sharp knife. I gave my sharp one away. That was a mistake, wasn't it? So it's alright. It's all right, you know. It's quite dense. Doesn't taste as good. Doesn't taste as good. So the video. Well, there's two more videos come. So I've got some. This is me thinking. Way through things. I've got some somewhere. I've got some gluten-free flour that someone gave me. So, some gluten free flour. So, the experiment is the next one is let's do no need with bread flour and then let's do have a faff around with some gluten free flour because if we can get that result from, from plain flour that hasn't got that much gluten in it, then we should be able to get that result from that flour that hasn't got any gluten in it. Possibly, possibly, but there we go. So, a success. Who'd have guessed it? Who'd have guessed it?